Erie, Indiana, or the live-action version to Gravity Falls, another or the kid-friendly version to Supernatural, and yet another or Somebody decided it was a good idea to make Joe Dante the director of The Howling and Gremlins the creative consultant to a children's TV show. What drugs were early 90s television executives on, anyway? Because obviously, they're in need of a fresh batch. I want horror icons like John Carpenter, Ridley Scott, and Clive Barker to do children's TV, damn it. Okay, before I go into full insane mode here, allow me to explain the show. Erie, Indiana, which aired from 1991 to 1992, revolves around a teenager, Marshall Teller, whose family, get, whose family moves into a desolate town of which the show gets its title. He's not entirely enthusiastic about moving to Erie either, not simply because it's a new town with new obstacles to face, as often shown when you're a new kid in town. It's also because this town he moved into is the center of some very strange phenomenon. Examples, Elvis Presley is the customer on his paper route, and Bigfoot eats from the trash cans. He meets and befriends the younger Simon Holmes, who also believes something is wrong about the town. And together they set out to prove it. Marshall Teller is portrayed by Omri Katz, who many of you may recognize as the main character Max from the cult Disney classic Hocus Pocus. You know, the one with Bette Midler as a witch and her two sisters, the talking cat, the zombie, and a very young Thor Birch? Yeah, that one. An additional or the prequel to Hocus Pocus! By the way, I should mention I love that part in Hocus Pocus when Max starts whining about moving to Salem, and I immediately shine in. Really? Erie, Indiana was better? A few people who watch it with me get the connection going, He is the kid from Erie, Indiana. While the rest are like, What are you talking about? Simon is portrayed by Justin Shinkaru who, if you listen closely, then you may recognize him as the voice of Harold Berman from Hey Arnold. Yeah, I didn't even realize that either until I did some research into this show. To be honest, it's odd to think about, too. Like when you realize that Alan Young, the guy who played Wilbur on Mr. Ed, also voiced Scrooge McDuck on DuckTales. Or Chris Sarandon, the guy who played that rotten Prince Humperdinck in The Princess Bride, also voiced Jack Skellington in The Nightmare Before Christmas. It's just kind of hard to put two and two together. Moving on, remember why I described it as the live-action version of Gravity Falls? Well, it turns out that Alex Hirsch, the creator of Gravity Falls, has cited this series as an influence to his. On a further note, in regards to influence, remember why I called it the kid-friendly version of Supernatural? Well, there are some episodes to Supernatural that I'd like to point out that clearly took influence from episodes of Erie, Indiana. Season 9, Episode 5, Dog Dean Afternoon, in which Dean Winchester, portrayed by Jensen Ackles, performs an spell on himself to communicate with dogs, reminds of an episode of episode two of Eerie, The Retainer, in which one of Marshall's friends, Steve, is fitted for a retainer that gives him the power to read dogs' minds. Season five, episode eight, Changing Channels, in which the in which Sa Dean and Sam, portrayed by Jared Padalecki, are sent by the trickster, portrayed by Richard Spate Jr., through a montage of TV show parodies that Episode slightly resembles episode 5 of Eerie, America's Scariest Home Videos, in which Simon's brother accidentally gets sucked into a TV. That's only a slight, and I mean a very slight influence, and very difficult to spot. One of the more obvious influences, though, comes from season 6, episode 15, The French Mistake, in which Dean and Sam are sent to an alternate dimension where their lives are a TV show called Supernatural, and everyone refers to them as Jensen Ackles and Jared Padalecki. That episode greatly resembles the series finale to Erie, Indiana, called Reality Takes a Holiday, where after an argument with his family, Marshall finds a television script in the mail and suddenly finds himself on the set of a TV show called Erie, Indiana, where his friends and family are the actors and the actresses on the show, and everyone refers to him as Omri Katz. Would I call these blatant ripoffs? Not really. They took inspiration, that's sure enough, but they went on and did their own thing to merit it as pretty original. It just means someone, or maybe a few people, were obvious fans to Erie, to Erie, Indiana. Which is fine by me. As a fan of this show, it's nice to know there are others out there. Besides, one of my favorite things about Supernatural is when I can, is when I can catch these obvious inspirations. The series, though canceled, did have a spin-off in 1997 called Erie, Indiana, The Other Dimension. See, in 1997, Fox began airing the original series on their children's programming block, Fox Kids, 
which got the original series a cult following, despite its short run. The renewed popularity inspired Fox to make a new series, which also lasted only one season. It didn't, I didn't see all of them, but I can say I wasn't too impressed with what little I did see. It just didn't feel the same without Marshall and Simon. Next week on Penguin's Rock, a sitcom about an everyman and his two unusual, otherworldly drinking buddies. See you then!